Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, this is Heath. Some of you may know me as CGamer76 uh, from Twitch.tv. Uh, this is going to be the second part to my life story. I uh, would appreciate it if you would watch the whole thing. Uh, there's going to be some, hopefully, some enlightening things about my life in it. I uh, hope you enjoy the video. Uh, if you do, I would appreciate it uh, if you're throwing a like on it. Also, uh, at the end of the video, uh, if you want to ask me some questions uh, about what it is being, you know, meaning to be paralyzed, uh, something that you, uh, you know, real thought you might have, uh, let me know about it in the comment section below. But uh, we'll get right into the video and uh, we'll go into a little bit more detail about my life and stuff. Uh, this is going to be just a second part. There's going to be several parts to this. So I hope you can learn something from it, take something from it. And not only that, but I hope you enjoy the video as well, and I uh, appreciate it. Just to recap what we talked about in the first part, um, we left off where I was discussing how I developed a stress ulcer in my stomach, and how it potentially, well, it could have been really life-threatening for me as well. Uh, but uh, we were blessed that the doctors found it through uh, chest x-ray because I had developed pneumonia after uh, my accident. Um, so they were coming in every day to do chest x-rays and it just so happened that, that stress ulcer had uh, appeared on the x-ray so it, because my bladder was over the hole um, it essentially saved my life kept my stomach acids from uh, leaking out into my body and uh, essentially poisoning me um, also uh, I was on a respirator at the time uh, many people have asked uh, about the scar that's on my neck <clears throat> and that was a result of having to have a tracheotomy uh, I was hooked to a respirator which uh, assisted me in breathing uh, because I was unable to breathe on my own because I had a lung that had collapsed uh, because of the level of my spinal cord injury which was C5 and C6 which is about right there on your neck uh, those vertebrae right there damaged my spinal cord about that level uh, that's why I can use my fingers. If you notice, I wear a splint, so I can't move my fingers. Uh, I use a pencil to be able to type on a keyboard and stuff like that. So I'm essentially paralyzed from my underarms down. Um, I can't move anything below that point. Uh, I can't, however, I do, however, have feeling in those areas. Uh, not complete feeling like, you know, normal pe normally you would. But I can feel a sense of touch and things like that. But... You know, I experienced a great deal in the hospital, and it, once they finally got me stabilized to an extent, I actually started getting better. Um, when I first got hurt, I couldn't move anything. I could barely move my arms. Um, I had to wear a halo, which was essentially, my wife said it looked like a birdcage on my head. Uh, it was screw here, screw here and a screw behind each ear which stabilized my neck and allowed the bones uh, in my vertebrae to heal. Uh, even though the bones heal, uh, the damage to my spinal cord was permanent. Uh, that's why I'm still paralyzed today. So, all that being said, um, I spent a little over a month and a half in an uh, intensive care unit uh, before I was able to actually go to a regular be released from intensive care uh, After I was released from intensive care I went had to go to rehabilitation um, And they essentially t had to reteach me how to do everything um, I had to learn a new way how to uh, Move get around uh, I had to learn to use a wheelchair essentially um, All of those things uh, I had to retrain my body for certain events. Um, having to take a, a, a bath uh, now required assistance from somebody else. Uh, doing things like toiletry and things like that required assistance from somebody else. I couldn't do any of those things on my own anymore. I uh, couldn't even tie my shoe on my own anymore. So having to learn to adjust and not only adjust, but to allow other people into your life to be able to 
do those things for you that you can no longer do for yourself. But I spent probably the next, from October, November, December, and January the 14th, I spent all of that time uh, at rehabilitation, learning how to do all that stuff all over again. I uh, came home from rehabilitation January 14th of 1994. Uh, came back to my parents' house. I was, like I said, I was only a teenager, 17 years old. Uh, I still lived at home. I was still in high school. And actually, uh, after I came home, I started homeschooling uh, because I was in my senior year. I had a teacher that came to my house and helped me uh, do my schoolwork and stuff like that. And I was actually able to graduate on time still, even after spending all that time in the hospital and in rehabilitation. Uh, I graduated from high school in 1994. Uh, a couple of months later, uh, I had to go to for some more rehabilitation uh, at vocate, vocational rehab, uh, which was basically trying to teach me not only the physical aspects, but potentially... Uh, living with, you know, being paralyzed. Uh, and the, what is the word I'm looking for? The impact it would play upon my life. Uh, because at this point, I was dependent completely upon somebody else to do everything for me, uh, still. But um, after I came home, I had to do four weeks of that. Came home from that. But during that period of time while I was away, um, I, I had to stay there during the week. And on the weekends, I got to come home. Uh, Amanda, my wife, well, she was my girlfriend then, she would come with my dad down on the weekends to come pick me up. And uh, we would get to spend the weekends together. Uh, she would come up. She still lived with her dad. Um, she would come over to my house, and uh, we would get to spend time together that way. But, um, and we... Her junior year of uh, high school, uh, we actually went to her junior prom. So that was that was a, a, a wonderful event to go to. Um, but, you know, also during this period of time, you're not only learning to adjust physically to the changes that I, that I faced, but uh, emotionally as well. I mean, realize I was 17, she was 16. So, this was a whole, I mean, almost like a, a new life for us in a way. Because we had to learn to adjust and change everything. Um, emotionally, physically, all of it. So, it was, it, it was a huge growing process for both of us. Um, also, during this period of time, you know, when things happen in your lives... You learn who you can depend upon, uh, who's going to be there with you uh, no matter what, um, who's going to stay by your side, who's going to abandon you. Um, so many stories I heard from other guys and girls while I was in the hospital and in rehab and stuff. Um, husbands left their wives. Wives left their husbands because of their injury. Um, and it's sad. It, it, it's sad because, uh, and, and I can also understand in a way because this is a huge change. Um, but through it all, Amanda still with me by my side through every bit of it. Uh, ups, downs, good, bad, all of it. Um, she has been my rock. She often says that I'm her inspiration uh, because I continue on no matter what I face. But she's my inspiration because not many people would have stuck someone through uh, the hardest times of their life. And she's had other people ask her, you know, or say to her, you know, there's no way uh, if my husband or my boyfriend, you know, was ever something like that was to happen. And, you know, they ask her, how do you do it? And her response is because she loves me. Uh, If you love someone, truly love someone, uh, you'll be there for them. And I am so grateful to her for sticking by my side 
uh, for all the love and support she's shown me throughout the years. Um, she had to learn just like I did um, because it was all new to us. Uh, everything that had happened, everything that changed. Uh, daily tasks that I had to learn how to do and be dependent upon somebody else to help me with. Uh, things like taking a bath, uh, brushing my teeth, tying my shoes. Uh, I couldn't do those things anymore. Uh, but now, over the years, uh, it has been almost 26, this year will be 26 years since I was paralyzed. Um, me and Amanda have been together 27 years. Uh, 17 years of that, we were we have been married. Uh, we went to college together. Um, we have been by each other's side uh, through it all. And uh, she is my blessing in life. Uh, she has been my greatest source of strength and encouragement. Uh, she's pushed me uh, to do things that I probably wouldn't have have done without her support. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I love her is because despite it all, despite every situation that we faced, and we've had tough times, uh, don't get me wrong, we've had hard times in our life, in our marriage, in our relationship. But one thing that we've always done is that we've always uh, worked on it. We've always uh, tried to uh, depend upon each other in such a way that uh, no matter what comes against us, that we uh, stay strong for each other. Um, in any relationship, whether, you know, someone is paralyzed or someone you know it has, it has a disability or not that goes for any relationship is being there for the person you love and care about uh, but I appreciate all of you guys love and support um, ever since the Tech Source video came out um, it has meant the absolute world to me the support you guys have shown me um, a lot of people, you know, said, you know, I've, I've received such great comments. Uh, people talking about, you know, I'm such an inspiration to them or, or you know, for. But I, I don't look at it that way. Uh, because to me, um, I just live my life just like anybody else does. Um, I wake up in the morning. Um, I just have to do it a different way. I have to depend upon somebody else to help me get ready, you know, get, get a bath, get dressed, you know, things like that I talked about. But. Um, the support and outpouring of love that I have felt on, on a, a, a large scale because of a simple video has been a huge blessing in my life. And I am so grateful for all of you guys' kindness, uh, everything you've done. Uh, it really, really means a lot to me. Um, I know I didn't go into a great deal of detail about my injury in this video uh, but I, I'll be doing another part to this uh, telling you a little bit more a little bit more about my life uh, we got 26 years of experience of being paralyzed and if there's somebody out there that can take something from it uh, by one of these videos that it helps their life I hope it does uh, but we'll see you next time guys and uh, all of you and once again thank you guys for all you do for me uh, it means the world to me and we'll see you next time guys